call this meeting to order. Clerk, call roll. Councilmember Casarelli? Yes. Dependent? Yes. Graziano? Here. Yes. Guitard? Yes. Stuart Lebert? Present. Mayor Mellon? Here. Sunshine? <laughs> Pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was published in the December 19, 2020 editions, December 19, 2019 editions of the Star Ledger and the Bevel Times. A copy of this notice has been posted on the Bevel Tavern Bolton Board, and a copy is on file with Next on the agenda is item four. We have executive session. We initially had two items scheduled for executive session, Housing Trust Administration and Receive Captain Briner. Uh, we are not going to executive session today, so we're just going to skip that portion of the meeting. Correct? Can I go? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay, item five, approval of minutes. <coughs> not at this time, Mayor. No minutes to approve. Yes. Item six, report of the manager. Is it five limit, limit, five minutes? Five, five minutes, yeah. just like everybody else. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Clock is started. Okay. Yeah. You guys are going to follow along on the slides, okay, on the report. I know this is not the best case scenario for a PowerPoint, but under the conditions we have, this report will be made available. Certainly, we'll get it up on the website. And if anybody in the room that just wants a copy, um, that it's filled with a lot of great information. If you just call my office, we'll make sure you get a copy. Um, why, why do an end of the year report? Uh, certainly we use it as an opportunity um, to gauge forecasts. Uh, we take a look at trends, okay, five, six years from now, we'll, we'll be able to go back. And I think what you're going to find in this report is a lot of valuable information, a lot of interesting information, and clearly it shows, um, it shows the level of what the town does on a day-to-day -day basis. So. Um, with that, first thing I'd like to do certainly is, is thank the entire workforce um, because all of the information in this report is a product of what they do every day. So the workforce as a whole, I think, and certainly every chance I get uh, and every opportunity I get, I'd like to thank our department heads. Uh, we have some or most of them here today, and again, they are responsible for the good work. Also, this was a transition year, and uh, certainly I have to take my hat off to Mauro Tucci, who was the uh, initial uh, manager for the transition, and also um, making Mark the assistant town manager was, was extremely, extremely helpful and certainly helps with, with, with this product. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of slides. I don't anticipate being on any one given slide for much more than 15 seconds. So bear with me again. The report's going to be about 10, 12 minutes. We'll be fine. I did it three times in the shower. <laughs> so we have a picture. First slide, we have a picture of a, some of our new equipment. Let's go over to the first slide, um, Department of Public Works. What you see here is you see the fact that uh, some, some information. We are uh, maintaining over 41 properties, nine baseball fields. There was 51 clean and leans done, that was totaling roughly 43,000. Again, I'm going to just be throwing out a lot of important information, just some highlights. <coughs> Go over to the next page, on which continues. We had um, over 28,000 tons of white goods that was collected. Those are your washes and dryers. Um, there's an interesting uh, fact here that people always ask, what's 50,000 pounds of e-waste? 50,000 50, pounds of e-waste, so those are your old computers, those are your old t televisions. 50,000 pounds. And when you think about it, that's a lot of manpower to be able to, to haul 50,000. The next slide is our police department. Thank you, Chief Nikini, for always being at our council meetings. And um, in summary, in 2019, our police department handled over 61,000 calls. That's 61,000. That's an 11% increase compared to the following year. Again, these are the trends that we're going to be monitoring. There were over 996 motor vehicle accidents that they answered. 
and over 6,100 9-11 calls. Okay? Belleville made 658 criminal arrests, and there was close to 20,000, or actually 18,000 motor vehicle summonses issued. Continuing with the uh, police, you'll see, um, I'm sorry, 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 our next slide talks about, we had some police personnel retired and we also have some newsworthy promotions. Shows us, next slide shows us uh, our personnel. Um, one minor correction that the chief pointed out to me, this report reflects 103 sworn. The real number is 99, correct, chief? Yes, sir. Again, we'll tighten this up when we make it available. This next slide talks about uh, trends. Our assaults in 2019 down 18%. Burglaries down 20%. Thefts down 13%. This was one of Belleville's, Belleville's safest years on record. And again, this is very valuable information that will come on. We also monitor, which is the next slide, which is, talks about the Police Department 2019 summary. We monitor five categories. In Belleville, in 2019, we went down in four out of the five categories. We went down in motor vehicle thefts, thefts, burglary, assaults, and robberies. I'm sorry, robberies went up just a slight other decreases have been significant decreases. Next slide just shows just a quick summary of what our police, our police community reach. We've all seen and, and uh, seen the news and read the newspaper articles where police departments and local communities in big cities are not accepted by the residents. As a matter of fact, the police looked at as the bad guy. Well. Uh, if you've ever been to any of the Chief's community outreaches, you realize that our department is well, well respected by the community, they're engaged with the community, and they have a great relationship with the children. And these are just some of the programs that we provide. And moving over to our fire department, that's the next slide where you'll see the fire trucks. Again, thanks Chief Oliveri for always being at our, our council meetings. Our fire department, 2019. 5,214 calls. 1,200 calls were uh, fire-related calls. And uh, keep in mind that um, under EMS, over 4,000 EMS calls, okay? They attended to 383 motor vehicle accidents. And there's an epidemic going on, not just in Belleville, not just in New Jersey, but in the United States. Um, unfortunately, the ratio of people overdosing on drugs is the highest it's ever been. Uh, the fire department, and I don't have the statistic included into the police department, but I will. The fire department uh, administered 18 Arcans, and what that is, with, they actually bring somebody who actually overdosed, who actually could be almost classified as, as dead, they actually bring them back. So um, that's a very interest, interesting statistic. Before I go to the next slide, I uh, want to point out that the average response time for the Belleville Fire Department is under four minutes. Again, thank you, Chief, for doing such a great job. Here's our TO. This TO doesn't include the ceremony, obviously, that just took place, but uh, um, it, it represents our offices and it's one firefighters. Again, last page, similar to the police, we do a, a great job with... Um, uh, community outreach. This past Christmas uh, holiday event at the at the firehouse, the line went down uh, down the block. The, the one also uh, interesting number here is fire prevention. Our fire prevention bureau did over 1,400 inspections. Also, some other newsworthy uh, information that we provide in the summary. Uh, we had a Val reward. We had a battalion chief. We received an award because it was a tra tra trapped occupant <laughs> while off duty. And uh, just recently, in 2020, just last week, and I know the Chiefs could report it, we had an off duty Belleville Fire Department uh, 
was off duty, came across uh, an accident, pulled the person out of the car. This all happened within the last 10 days. And then by, after he pulled that person out of the car, the car went up and, and, and flamed. So again, this is all off duty. We do a great job um, with applying for receiving awards. In 2019, we actually applied $750,000 of grants towards the Belleville Department. And I see uh, Judy Lombardi here does a great job in, in helping that. So it's, it's always great opportunities to say thank you to Judy. Moving right along, um, we have two new pieces of equipment that we uh, were included in the 2019. These are two major pieces of equipment. One is a pumper and one is a new ambulance. Those pieces of equipment should probably be here within the next 30 or 45 days. So that's pretty exciting. We talk about some revenue. The ambulance uh, revenue brought in over 700000 and there was uh, also uh, grant reimbursement. It's over nine, $900,000 for revenue. We're on the health department. Uh, the last meeting we had uh, our health officer, Colleen Bratton, and again, I think it was, we made a suggestion at that time that going forward, maybe once a month, we will highlight uh, one department at a time, and that similar to what Carl, Colleen explained to us, we can use these numbers and numbers of 2020. But um, as what you may not realize, but in 2019, our health department administered seven thousand and seven hundred dollar rides that's transporting our seniors our residents uh they issued over 1500 dog licenses things like uh, flu shots we gave out 320 those flu shots are all free to our community i'm going to move to our recreation department clearly this department is a, a department that has a major major impact on our youth and our community as a whole the first slide that you'll see after the nice picture is that in 2019, for the first time, we instituted new programs that have never been implemented in uh, Belleville. So we, uh, for the first time, we had an arts and craft program, we had a hockey program that didn't exist, track and field, and our theater workshop for the first time uh, in 2019. Uh, got 35 participants, and now a year later, we're gonna be uh, hearing about our first production of Annie. We're still on um, recreation. What's pretty uh, exciting about this, these are some of our core sports. Our baseball program had over 50 teams and 900 participants. Again, somebody has to be able to in charge of that and keeping that all together. We take our hats off to Tom, and I see Jerry in the background. Basketball, 50 teams, 700 participants. Next page, our cheerleading program. Our youth football in 2019 had an experience to go to MetLife Stadium and actually go on the field and play. Hey, uh, this is a lifetime, this is an experience of a lifetime for some of these children to go to MetLife Stadium. Uh, soccer program, again, huge, huge program. We have over 500 participants. Our wrestling program, um, we are now implementing an off-season training program. Under miscellaneous, can't say more than enough for our summer programs. Uh, a good portion of our, our demographics in, in uh, Belleville is that you have both the mom and the dad working. So in the summer, while children are not in school, these summer programs where we, we basically have waiting lists at the rec house, at the high school stadiums, tennis camps, these programs are so valuable, you can't put a dollar on it because those, those, both those moms and dads that are working, and if the, you know, where, where would those kids be and how much would that cost? So we're able to provide a safe haven. And again, we take our, our hat off to the recreation department. They do a great job. The municipal green team. Um, again, I'm looking forward to the night that Cosmin Cazzarelli and Gabby take, take the lead and come before the council and bring us up to speed. But again, in 2019, we uh, achieved 65 points, and in 2000, let me go right to the next. Let me go right to the next slide. In 2020, this year, uh, Gabby told me it's almost a guarantee that we are going to exceed the level that we need to be, and we would be recognized 
one of only 200 communities that achieve this. And, and Gabby's going to go into the specifics, I'm sure, at the meeting that we invite the Green Team to. But Councilman Cazzarelli has been a very big help in that as well. Let me go back to... Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Here's an interesting uh, uh, slide and some, some real interesting statistics. Some of the fees that we collected, and again, Mary's here and her office does a, a great job. Um, but you look at sewer charges, 174,000. The water payments that came in, $4 million. Some other substantial numbers. Uh, we'll get to the building department later, but there's 219,000 just in permits alone. Then you see there's a uh, zoning board application, 16,000. Uh, birth certificates, again, we go back to you know, third floor and registered office. We collected $60,000. Again, those dollars represent manpower hours and work that we're doing every day. Now you stop giving me the eye, I'm almost done. How can we do a report without the clerk's department? Um, you know, Kelly does an excellent job. But you probably didn't realize that our building receives over 80,000 pieces of mail every year. And that's, that was logged in at 2019. 80,000 pieces of mail, 3,100 emails, okay, 3,100 emails. What you're going to see on the second slide is all of the good work that the council does each, each year. We, uh, we introduced 102 ordinances, 353 resolutions were prepared and acted on. Then it shows you your licenses. Open Public Record, <coughs> Open Public Record Act, 857 open requests were submitted to the clerk's office. Again, Mary, from Mary and, from and Kelly. Three people. <laughs> thank you. From Mary and, and Kelly, thank you for um, your efforts as well. Let's go over. Everybody's favorite department, Frank DiLorenzo, the building department. Where's Frank? There he is. Now, uh, on a serious note, over 5,000 inspections were conducted, over $1.3 million collected in fees. When you take a look at just electrical and plumbing, over 400 electrical, over 500 in plumbing. Okay, the second page represents um, 35 new certificates of new businesses opened in Belleville in 2018. <coughs> That's 35 businesses that didn't exist in 18 that came to Belleville and opened. So hopefully that number doubles next year. We'll be monitoring it. But again, all of this work is being done by the code department. Municipal court. A lot of information, and it's, it's a lot smaller, but um, the amount of work and the amount of uh, summonses and uh, dollars collected is amazing. They, um, excuse me, moving violations, 11,500 moving violations in Belleville in 2019. The, the total, the grand total of monies dispersed in 2019 was over a million dollars by our municipal court. And I think Yara, again, great job, and I think she'll correct me, but I think there's out of 22 courts in Essex County, we're number six as far as the busiest. Six to seven. Okay, again, 22. And let me finish off by just uh, complimenting. A law department. Um, again, Steve has done an amazing job of reducing outside legal costs, so we certainly want to take our, our hat off and commend uh, Steve and, and uh, Kathy in the law office. 400 and dis 450 discovery requests came in. Um, most important, there were some outstanding legal issues that went back in excess of 10 years. Steve did an excellent job on taking care of that. And one of the other items that I want to point out was the discovery. Where is the discovery? That's four, I said that. 450 um, discovery requests were processed by that point. So again, like I said, just like in the shop, I said we'll get it in 12 minutes, but uh -huh. 
But no, for serious, uh, we have to thank, obviously, the entire workforce for the amount of work that gets done on a day-to-day -day basis here in Belleville. We take a lot of things for granted, and hopefully this report is going to uh, reflect that. And certainly we're going to use this report going, uh, going, per uh, going into the future as far as monitoring uh, some very important information. The most important, thank you to our department heads that are here, our system manager, Ace in the hole, and, and certainly our vice chair. Thanks again. Thank you, Andrew. Good job. Good job. So, everybody heard that. Good job for wrapping up. Next item we have is the report of the, uh, report of the mayor. Uh, I just, just to touch base and piggyback off what of Grant was going. Uh, I didn't know really he was doing that. I didn't wasn't aware probably on purpose that he was preparing a report like that. Uh, but we've never had that before. So this is my second uh, my second stint, my second tour of duty up here. Twenty years ago, I was here with two different managers, and I started off with a different manager we have now, and uh, we've never had that. I saw it done in January. Uh, now I saw it done during a budget presentation at the school district of Dr. Tomko, and uh, it was we've never had that. So I thank you, Anthony. A lot of information, uh, not going to be easy to digest, but I'm told we will have that available to post on the website, so it can be looked at with um, eagerly anticipating eyes, I guess. But I do thank you for that. It's not easy to compile the data together. Thank you, department heads that are here uh, on your off nights. It's uh, it's nice to see everybody. And I think Anthony's doing. I know I, I don't speak just for myself, but I, I know Andrew's doing a great job and what a great guy for this town. Sure. Thank you again. So, without further ado, I have a brief mayor's report. I want to first provide a water filter update. We had got on this journey a few months ago and launched a website to register residents for filters. Uh, we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people register through that website prior to the fact of having filters. Uh, I then went out and, uh, like a traveling salesperson, went literally door to door trying to raise money and we wound up raising seventy thousand dollars fifty thousand of that was from the city of Newark twenty thousand dollars of that was from Claire Moss we recently had an event uh, a week ago Friday maybe where it was the culmination of those efforts and we started distribution I will say uh, having an event like that is positive it's not just for unwanted or unneeded publicity for me or the township or the governing body the administration because I will tell you that since that day and since the subsequent media coverage, we've had more people register for filters than in the three or four months that we were asking them to register. So the media coverage and all that worked because we ended up with more people registering. There was no other way to do that. We had been posting on the website. We had done a robocall. I had put it on social media. And one day's worth of media coverage over several different networks and, and online networks, we ended up with more than we had in total. So that was really good. We've been distributing them. It's, it's been a long go. Uh, we've never had to do a project like this. We are doing a couple things. We have about, don't hold me to it, 1,400, 1,500 families registered. We can't just hand out filters to everybody. That, there's a process in place. Our town, turn, our town engineer takes that data and then he's got to vet it. He's got to find out, one, if the, if the people that registered live in Silver Lake. If they do, well, that's a separate list because Norton takes care of them. He's got to find out whether or not the house, the age of the house. So he deals probably with our assessor's office and finds out the age of the house. It was built after 1950, 1952. It does not have lead lines. They don't get a filter. Uh, if it's a multi-unit house, anything north of four, but certainly anything north of six, eight, or ten, uh, a one-inch lead service line would never fit there, so there's no lead in that household. So we have to vet them. We just can't hand them out. It would have been easier to take a list of 1,500 and everybody come and hand them out. So we're individually vetting every address, we're individually calling people, we're individually emailing people. Uh, and the process is going slow, but we're getting there. I bear the brunt of it, because there are people online that say to me, I registered two weeks ago, I haven't gotten a call yet. And I respond to them and say, we're vetting every house, you will be contacted. Uh, and we've been doing that job. I think we're going to get a little better at that, now that we've been doing it for a week or two. Uh, and I've told people that we're going to get better at it, and I'm certain from my last conversation with, with the manager that he now has somebody dedicated tasked with this with this undertaking, and we're going to do a little better job at that. Uh, and ma uh, manager only really gave a uh, his presentation today. Do you have another mayor, uh, manager report or no? Okay. Yeah. You, you kind of, so that, that was an overview of his report, but I just I didn't know if he was going to mention it. If not, I'll mention it. There was some double water bills that were issued. Uh, simple computer glitch. Computer was printing. The computer died. We've all been there. 
computer started printing again, it started from the beginning. Uh, they were mailed out duplicate bills, you don't have to pay twice. We're, we, we regret the inconvenience, we regret the additional postage, but it happens. Um, so that's the past stuff. Uh, as you saw here today, we very proudly promoted eight firemen today. Uh, we had a packed house, a lot of council members here. It was good to be able to be here to see our fire department celebrate promotions like that. We had some retirees. Uh, it's a cost savings in the long term. It's not an upfront uh, plus number for us with the retirees with not filling a specific position. Uh, we're very proud of that. And this administration, this governing body has supported the fire department immensely, especially with equipment. We are awaiting the receipt of a new fire, is it an engine, a truck, a ladder, what do we call it? Engines. Engine. We're, we're awaiting the receipt of a fire engine, and a couple weeks, if not a few months behind that, will be a brand new ambulance for us. So we've been investing there, and I think it pays off. It's a service that I know the township is grateful for. Um, as we now know, recycling calendars are out. Uh, many, many compliments on them. We recently had a Martin Luther King Day flag raising. We had our football coach here with us and one of our residents that assisted as the honored guests. Uh, upcoming, tomorrow, 12 noon, we will be having a Chinese flag raising. Uh, here, as most of you know, Chinese New Year's is very uh, important to the township. Chinese New Year started on this past Saturday, the 28th. A week before that, I was invited to Livingston to take part as something the Belleville Mayor is always invited to with the statewide Chinese community, something that I hope and pray that all future mayors will also participate in. My third event with them in 18 months. So it's nice that we do that. We will be having those representatives here tomorrow at 12 noon. And uh, as you all know, next year is 150th year anniversary. We are planning a big Chinese New Year celebration. Um, I think there is, speaking of Chinese New Year, there is an exhibit, I believe, going on at the, at the Bell Public Library. February upcoming, Black History Month, we will once again be doing an exhibit either in the library or in Town Hall. We're not quite sure yet, but details will come out on that shortly. Next council meeting, uh, you may have seen it on the agenda today, but really it's next council meeting. Most of you may remember our active shooter drill from a few months ago. It's nice to do those things, but it's even better to actually cobble together the data and then make some changes. So I know our police department has worked hard. They've issued surveys to all participants. They've had meetings. They've gone through the different requirements and different recommendations. The council will be briefed in executive session next meeting since they are matters of public safety. And uh, we're going to hear what the recommendations are. It could be basic things like changing the floor names or color coding floors or something like that. Basic stuff, but I'm actually anxiously looking forward to that. Uh, last but not least, our town attorney is working on a draft memorandum of understanding between the Township of Belleville and the City of Newark regarding the Newark Reservoir. It's something that uh, we've been investing in, we've been investing time and energy in. I've had several conversations and meetings with Newark officials, including Newark Mayor. Uh, we are going to get them that memorandum of understanding and put the ball in their court. They've already agreed in concept. They basically said, Belleville, the reservoir is yours as long as we get signed off at higher level, state and federal level. If we can get those approvals, it's ours. Uh, we're just working at the details. That's really it for my report of the mayor. Next up, we have communications. A letter is received from Michael Mayor Michael Melham appointing Jacqueline Wuhan as the mayor's designee to the Belleville Planning Board and appointing Frank Sangari as a class four member to the Belleville Planning Board. Be received from Comcast of New Jersey a check in the amount of $148,384.63 for the use of municipal right of way. Ordinances, ordinances for introduction. Ordinance number one, ordinance to amend the ordinance creating permanent positions and adopting reclassification and compensation plans. Make a motion for introduction. Second. Second. Motion made, second. Clerk, call roll. Council Member Casarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Stringler Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance number two for introduction. Ordinance approving the First Amendment to the amended financial agreement for long term tax exemption. Buying between the Township of Belleville and Mill Street Development Urban Renewal, LLC. Make a motion for introduction. Second. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Pazarelli? Yes. Compania? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Stringle Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance number three for introduction. Ordinance approving the financial agreement for long term tax, tax exemption. Buying between the Township of Belleville and Franklin Park of Belleville Urban Renewal, LLC. Make a motion for introduction. Second. 
Motion remains in. Clerk will roll. Council Member Cazzarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Stuart Lilbert? Yes. Mayor Menlin? Yes. Make a motion open for public comments. Second. Second. Motion made second. Open oh, public comments. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazzarelli? Yes. Stipendia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Stuart Burke? Yes. Mayor Melvin? Yes. Public comments, anybody? All right. Mayor, let's draw 95 Bell Street. Can you tell me what the uh, resolution 19 is? What is the address? You know, what is it? What kind of building? That is the second phase of the we have the senior, we call okay, the senior building. I remember now, that's good. Phase one was built, already had a pilot, already had approvals in place. They're building less units, so you're going to see what the next Where is that exactly going? Right. It's, it's just another wing. Okay. To, the, to the current building? Yes. yes. It was designed that way for two. Oh, no, it? Okay. They built it in phases. We're reducing the number. So everything you're going to see in the next couple of meetings is actually just amendments to the prior approved pilots and all those plans. Anybody else? Mr. Uh, good evening. Normally I let uh, Mr. Frantitoni speak before I do, but apparently he's in Wildwood tonight auditioning for the council or ambassador to the Ukraine, so unfortunately he's not with us tonight. I know he, a lot of the things I'm going to talk I'll, I'll about, about he's, he was going to. Uh, thank you for clarifying uh, ordinance uh, number uh, uh, three. Uh, the, I'm sorry, number two. The uh, ordinance number three for Franklin Park. Wait, wait, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Number three, you clarify. Number two, uh, this is the Mill Street development. Is this for the former Roche property? This is the the warehouse or the uh, storage center that's going up along Mill Street? No, I believe this is for what I just received, right? Yeah, no, this is for that uh, senior development. Senior development. Sen for Mill Street? Yeah. That's an amendment um, to something already approved. Uh, the Franklin Park, number three, and the Franklin They're Park. both the same. They're both, both the same. Both the same. Yeah, right. for that All right. All right, thank you for clarifying that. Um, quick question. Uh, we're still on track for the uh, uh, debut of Board Docs, your version of Board Docs, at the next council meeting. Kelly? Hopefully, yes. Okay, all right. Looking forward to that. Uh, in regard to the uh, duplicate water bill, you said it was uh, due to a printer dying, but from some social chatter, some people were indicating that they got three water bill, so did the printer die twice, or what's, what is what is the explanation for some people getting three water bills? I, I don't tend to believe, I don't tend to believe social channels. All right. I was told twice. All right. I just wanted to bring that to your attention, because some, I did see on Facebook and some postings that people were claiming to have received three water bills. I won't so believe what you're With the numbers Facebook. changing, with the numbers changing with each additional copy, so you're saying it's a printer error, but somehow with each ensuing copy, the, the billable amount is changing, so I, I, you, you can look into that further. I just wanted to let everyone know about that. Uh, on your Facebook page the other day, uh, I tried to engage you in a cordial discussion. Someone had, as you acknowledged during your comments, someone had asked, who claims to be living in a multi-dwelling unit, that she applied for a water filter but didn't get any uh, follow-up, and you explained to her, you're in a multi-dwelling unit, there are no lead service lines. My question to you is, very politely at the time, but you, you, know, you, you took it in, into another direction, unfortunately. How do you know that multi-dwelling units don't have lead service lines? You mentioned a few moments ago that there's some sort of height diameter situation that uh, res regular houses have one inch, up to one inch. Multi-dwellings, apparently, from my research, have obviously much larger diameter pipes, but from what I've found, some of those multi-dwelling units still have lead pipes. They're just larger diameter. So I don't know how you could make such a blanket statement that anyone living in a multi-dwelling building doesn't have to worry about a lead service line. My question to you, when did New Jersey ban lead service lines? Because you've been throwing out the number at, at the suggestion, at the recommendation of Tom Harris, the township engineer, that the benchmark point is 1950 thereabouts. But if you do the research, when did New Jersey ban lead service lines? 19, not 1950, not 1960, not 1970, not 1980. They, they were banned statewide in 1987. So there is a possibility, even though you're using this artifice of 1950 as a cutoff point, that many 
houses built after 1950 were still outfitted with lead service lines. So until you start wanting with metal detectors or doing a, a more specific survey, you know, even if you if you were to randomly survey a hundred houses in Belleville and to see and, and check to see what type of plumbing they have, you could make a statistical inference at that point what the, the totality is of lead service lines throughout the township, rather than just doing these guesstimates based on a, a, an artificial cutoff of 1950. Something you might want to look into. I'm sure Tom Harrods. You know, it's really basic statistical theory. You know the the the, the confidence interval goes like one over two times the square root of n, where n is the number of sample points. You do 100, 100. You're, you're, you're losing me on that. Well, it's it's a, it's very basic statistics. If you if you sample a hundred, randomly sample a hundred properties and see what their service lines are, you'll know with a 95% confidence interval what the situation is town wide. So rather than just going through when were houses constructed and say, well, we'll, we'll take 1950 as a cutoff. Anything before 1950 has led, anything after 1950 doesn't. If you were to do basically a really simple one or two day project, I'll even volunteer to help if you need the, the, the little calculations done. But <coughs> if, you, if you do that little bit of work, you would finally know within a 95% confidence interval what the lead situation is for the township. So just to wrap up. All right. Uh, you're, you're, you're over your five minutes. All right. Well, I, I, let me just see. There's one more. You mentioned or during Mr. Iacono's report um, the number of OPA requests made last year at 900. And you said kind of sarcastically three people. Uh, I just want it to be on record that the number of OPA requests that I file in any given year is single digit. I doubt if I'm even above half a dozen. Thank you. And most of my OPA requests are just a single page. Perfect. So I'm Thanks. not part of that three. You know, if you think that I'm, I'm overwhelming the clerk's office. Thank you. Anybody else? Sir? Frank Fleischman, 833 Main Street. Uh, first of all, Mayor, I wanted to, uh, wanted to say I usually get informed by different people what's going on, that sort of thing. Um, it's like the fact that you had a car accident, and I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm glad you're okay. You know, I know that you and I have a lot of difference, that sort of thing, but I certainly, you know, I'm glad that you're okay. Actually, having had a six-month-old SUV totaled about three years ago in my neighborhood, I, you know, I can relate to a certain extent, so I'm glad you're okay. Um, I'm just wondering, who sets the, uh, who sets the agenda, like, for the meetings, that sort of thing? Combination of... Mostly manager, sometimes the attorney, sometimes the clerk has business she puts on it. It's a, it's a, it's a collaborative effort. Okay. Um, the only reason why I mention is that um, I did send the entire council and the manager and the town clerk an email on behalf of Belleville Town Advocates, and I clearly asked for it to be included in the communications. Well, res agenda. residents don't set the agenda. I understand that. I'm just a little disappointed that it didn't make it into the communications. But that's the best. Um, I heard during the report we get over 8,000 pieces of mail wow. a year. So. Okay. All right. 80,000. 80,000. 80, 80, I was about to say 8,000 sounds a little low. I don't know who counts them, but <laughs> you probably have someone's job here as the count. <laughs> so on the agenda, I do see that you had a correspondence where changes have been made on the planning board. Yes. Um, I'm just wondering, under what legal authority are you able to do that? Township's Administrative Code, 19-1. Hmm. Cite it right in the letter. Because that's really interesting, because according to 19-1, the Class 1 person is you. There's no, there's no allotment for an appointee, for a designee. Class 1? Class 1. I'm looking at the letter for Class 4. Which letter are you referring to? Okay. It's on the planning board website. The the law that's put there, 19-1 planning board, no, 19 which establishment. What are you talking about? Though? I, I made a class four appointment. Right, but you also switched into a class one appointee. You, you took the class four appointee and made it and made her uh, made her your designee. Am I correct? Oh, okay, yes. Okay, yes. so under what authority do you do that? State law. Hmm. That's interesting. Because as has every mayor, believe mm -hmm. it or not, I don't believe Mayor Kimball sat on the planning board. He had a designee as well. Oh no, I understand oh. that, but this was never on the planning board page before the 19-1, and it directly contradicts Section 40 
of the New Jersey Code. So I'm kind of wondering which one actually actually holds, you know, holds sweat. Do you have an idea? No, I go by past practice. I've done it before. Other mayors have done it before. Mm. State law says you got to designate. Because I have a designate also on the library board. Mm. Oh no, I understand that. I understand that. It's just that you know, you basically you took the, the class four appointee and made her your designate. And then your designee before became a class four. Yeah. Under state law, a class four is not your appointment. It's something the council has to do. That's not true at all. It's a material. It's a material change in the plan. It's not true at all. Right. State law. State law categorically gives the mayor the appointment, mm -hmm. as does Chapter 19 of Bellador. Unfortunately, the letter we got from Mr. Cates kind of yeah. contradicts. Unfortunately for you, Mr. Cates is the township attorney. No, I understand. But it seems like there's a lot going on around here as far as that's concerned. I mean, the planning board seems like, you know, something very special to you. So I want to make sure the law is followed. Okay. So I would like through the chair to form a request from Mr. Martino, a written legal opinion as to what your authority is as far as planning board appointments. Yeah. I'm under the direction of mayor and town council, not residents, asking for legal opinions. I can certainly send you an Cates, email. Just so you know, Mr. Cates' opinion does not have anything to do with the mayor's right to appoint. That was a Mr. Different, Mr. Different Cates' answer. opinion had to do with whether or not Jackie Gowman can sit on the planning board mm -hmm. as an employee. His letter had nothing to do with the mayor's right to appoint a class four member. Am I That's right? It. As I said, I would like to make. I think he asked you a question now. Am, am I right? Is did Mr. Did Mr. Cates' letter had anything to do with the mayor's right to? Appoint? I would say it had something to do with his appointment authority to a certain extent. Yes. But as I said before, I would like to request from Mr. Martino a written opinion. You can request it. So noted. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Motion. Motion closed. Public comment. Second. Motion made. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazarelli. Yes. Tepena. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Notari. Yes. Mr. Strimulberg. Yes. Mayor Melvin. Yes. Member Cosarelli. Yes. Tatania? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Strubelberg? Yes. Mayor Mendes? Yes. We do have new business, so nobody run away. Yep. <laughs> yes. I have a resolution for uh, one of our grant applications. Resolution of support from local governing body authorizing the Sustainable Jersey Grant <coughs> application for the Flower Mural Project by the Township of Belleville. Are we incurring any costs for this? No, it's just an application. Second on that? Motion made, second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazarelli? Yes. Tatania? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Kim Lilberg? Yes. Mayor Melvin? Yes. Now we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion made, second. All in fav